My friend, my friend, this is what a beginner piano session should include. There are a standard 88 keys on a piano. You have white keys and black keys. The middle of these keys would be considered middle C. And this is a C4. If we go all the way down, one hand on all three black notes, one hand on all two black notes. Now wherever you put these, every time you go to a grouping of two black notes and go down a half step, you get a C. So what happens is when we're using these notes in combination with other notes, we get triads because two harmonies of different proportion or size or interval or frequency or um, amount leads to having tones which we think are interesting and quiet, melancholy, sad, or happy. We can play with a multitude of different fingers. I teach from one, two, three, four, five because we could talk about triads all day long. In the key of A major, there are three sharps. Those sharps are F, C, and G. So when we say A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor, G sharp diminished, and then we have our A again. We could talk about that relatively by going whole step because we skipped this half step, which is a increment of a minor second, and win another minor second. Two minor seconds equal a major second. When we do that same concept and add another major second, we get a minor third. And another minor second equals a major third. So when we stack a major third, and then we take one, two, three, which is a minor third, we get a triad or a chord, which is a one note, two note, three note. Happens to be the one, the root of the chord, the median of the chord, the three, and the dominant of the chord, the five. So what we see when we played in the eyes of uh, A major, we get A major, we get B minor, we get a C minor, but we can't play it as just the C where it changes tonality. So we need to play it as a C sharp minor. And what happens when we do this? It tends to make more sense musically. Hear how that flows? Then we go to a D major, which would have a D, F sharp, A. When we go and we play uh, the, the root of the next chord, we're gonna be having an E major, right? So we can play the one and the five, and then keep the three if we want, and play six notes, or we can play just the five. When we go to our next note in the key of A, we have to have an F sharp. And that F sharp is a minor. So when we build our F sharp, we can't include the major third, the B flat or the A sharp. We need to use the A natural, thusly giving us the major, or the minor, sorry. <laughs> and then my favorite of all of these is gonna be the last one. So in the key of A, you guessed it, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. That G sharp is simply going to take the note of G sharp, play its fifth, which generally on a piano is always going to be perfect. C to G, C sharp, G sharp, D, A, G sharp, A sharp. If you're going back the other way or you wanna call them the other note, what we notice is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If we go backwards and we include all these notes, we could say C, C flat, B flat, A. A flat, G, G flat, F, F flat, E flat, D, D flat, C. And then if we're going up, we could call them C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, E sharp, F sharp, G, G sharp, a, A sharp, B, and then B sharp. It's interesting because the E and the F in the scale of C major 
are the three and four. Do, re, mi, fa, three, four. And then the seven, one is the other half step. So what we say is a scale is composed, a major scale, of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The reason why we teach from the key of C, we don't have to include any of these black notes to be able to play all the triads. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and then C major. So when we played this B diminished, B diminished is only in the key of C major, or A minor, which is C major's relative minor. One, two, three, four, five, six. When we play the six of the chord, it's an A. Now we're gonna play it as a minor six because that's the way it falls due to our seniorities. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished in resolution to the one. Same chord. So back again to key of A. A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E, um, E major. Um, we're gonna be playing an F sharp minor. Here's our G diminished. Do our one to five, which is going to be, remember, parallel. Every single one of these is parallel except B flat or A sharp, and then B. These two, these are the ones that do not have equal fingerings. It goes from black to white. We go from a B flat or an A sharp to an E sharp or an F. Same note and harmonically, same note. That's a fifth. Then you have to decide the major right here with your middle finger or play it as a minor with the D natural or the D flat. Awesomeness. So in the key of A major, like that. So we have the G. Um, we put that. That's not in the chord. We put the G up here, right here, and then we're gonna throw in our minor and then we're gonna move down our five. That is how we get a G diminished that resolves to an A major. The G diminished in the key of A major is the G diminished in F sharp minor, its relative minor, or in the key of A. So those are all seven diatonic chords that are stemmed out of the key of A. The reason why we teach in then A and C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, so we can make ideas about parallels. A one to a five is a perfect fifth. When we put this G on the C3 section, not the C, C1, C2, but the C3, which means if we're playing a C4 triad, if we move this G anywhere other than uh, behind the first note, it becomes the seniority. Uh, it changes not the seniority of the key, the majorness, but it changes the inversion of it, which means we simply put the tones somewhere else. If I put this G down here and played uh, G, C, and E, that is still a major. It's still a C major. C, E, G, one, three, five, or one, three, five. It just goes lower. So the constant reminder is a perfect fifth, one, two, three, four, five, no matter where you are, always is going to be inverted for a perfect fourth. So what our hands do is we kind of feel where a major chord is, right? And have a perfect fifth here. All the while, when we move back down here, we can remember that playing these two fingers, just going to our root note, switching, becomes our perfect fifth. Same note, so that's where a lot of, a lot of rhythm and uh, moving bass lines. A lot of things come from the left hand and the right hand, which I guess now we should talk about a little rhythm. When we clapped out rhythms like this, we can't really tell what the one is because we are counting together, but we can say two, three, four, that one, 
two, three, four, two. We can count whole notes. They're lasting four beats. We could play them on piano with a single note or a one. Take half the space. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. I, I like to play them on the one and the three. And if you're counting in two, one, two, one, two, you just be simply counting the duration of those notes. The half note looks like a whole note. It's just a round circle on our tab, except we put a stem on it, which means those little lines, those are stems. Now these special notes that we see on this page are formed by stacking quarter notes, which just so happens to be after half notes. Whole notes are four beats, half notes are two beats, and then quarter notes are every beat. One, two, three, four. This is where my brain sorta of goes, one and two and three and four and one and so I could get a downbeat, down, up, down, up. This is especially important when trying to count complex rhythms. So understanding that meter or tempo actually has a cadence. Almost all rhythms rely on four, four in one way or another. Even if I was playing seven, this leg would keep going in a pattern that would give me either representative of really fast whole notes, <laughs> really fast half notes, moderately fast quarter notes, slow eighth notes, or extremely slow sixteenth notes. Meaning, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just subdividing. If I did a measure of 11, I could divide it. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. So all rhythms basically need something that goes that keeps the meter. On piano, eighth note, eighth note, one, two, three, four. When we do two beats in the space of one, quarter note, eighth note. This is how a lot of really cool music cool music gets that beating rhythm so the drums can play along with it. We also have, after eighth notes, which are just doubling of the quarter, sixteenth notes. When we went from quarter notes to eighth notes, I was counting one and, one and, one and, one and, one and, one and, or one and, two and, three and, four and, one and, two and, three and, four and, one and, two and, three and, four and, one and, two. Notice how I'm doing this. I'm going quieter while keeping the meter, and then I'm getting louder. That's called dynamics. It's being able to use a quiet tone to cause a little bit of tension. Using quiet notes and triads with individual notes as notation, you add one thing called a progression. So in the key of C major, or we could do it in the key of A major, or we can modulate there using its diminished. If I played a one, six, 
four, and here's where it's fun. I'm gonna play my F here and my C up top because they're both in the chord. And then rather than move my hands back down in cadence like this, like jumping, I'm going to use the F inversion, which is nothing more than F, A, and C, but I'm putting the C down here, which means if I'm gonna put my five down here, this is a second inversion. If I would have put the A down here and had this, that would have been a first inversion. We can talk more about that in another video, but this is just the beginning of how to play a little bit of piano, understand terms, and use them so you could understand just in the key of C, and then move that to another key to be able to play your favorite songs. So if the song is a uh, C major to an A minor, to an F major, to a G, C major, any of the notes, that are the white notes you can play because they are all part of C major Ionian. When we go to the A minor, believe it or not, because A minor is one, two, three, four, five, six, C's relative minor, that means that all the notes in A minor are all the notes in C major. Some of them work better than others because of the way they're spaced, but have fun with that. The F major, you can go down here and play a triad if you're comfortable with it. I like to show this one as well, or you could work on all of them because it's a great way to get used to playing up and down uh, and making phrases like Piano's lots of fun. I like to show everybody there isn't a right way or a wrong way. You can try and do anything you want. Classically, there's a lot of things that you will learn that are going to need to be done. Uh, per learning do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Notice that the fingers went in a certain fashion. The last thing we'll cover here is how to play a scale. I usually play the whole triad on both hands with both different fingering sets. So I get used to playing them, right? And then I do my extensions as well. And I make the inversion here. And then I try and build that extension out when I'm playing through. And then hit low notes. Thumb on the right hand, pointer on the right hand. Middle on the right hand, thumb on the right hand. Pointer on the right hand, middle on the right hand. Look at that, just enough fingers to finish that scale. No matter what you do that in, in any major chord that starts with a white note, you play three fingers and go under and use its respective sharps and flats. The place that I put my fingers here were C sharp and F sharp because D major has two sharps. G major has one sharp. G, A, B, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not on G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. The practicality of this is wonderful. The only white key that does not do that is gonna be the F. F, G, A, and then B flat. So four fingers. And then we're gonna use our thumb for the C, D, E, and then F resolution. Because you use four up and then went four up, Guess what? Four down, cross over with the four, four down. If you do not start with your thumb and end with your pinky, you're a miss. Try that over and over again. We're gonna talk about the black keys and in intermediate um, introduction. Basically, it's to talk about how to put together these rhythms of the whole note and the half note, and then do a melody. able to understand a little bit more about adding one, two, three, the triad, and then adding a major seventh or a minor seventh. 
I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Aloha.